Today, guys, I want to start off with a question. A question we get asked pretty regularly. Does it really matter if I calculate resistance? Good question. Does it really matter if I calculate resistance? It's not necessarily a question that I need you to answer. Stand up, wave your hand and say, I know the answer. It's not necessarily something we need to stand up and answer right now. But something to think about. We're going to talk about the average day for a tower and things you might see. And I want, I want you to just think about that question as we go through. Does it really matter if I calculate the resistance? So first example. Larry from Larry Boss Construction has just called you up and he has a, a John Deere 210 excavator. Pretty good sized track machine. Operating weights 52,000 pounds. And when he calls you up, you can, you can hear the panic in his voice. You can feel his fear when he's talking to you and he says, I have my track hoe, it's sitting on this landscape shelf, it's on the edge of a ravine at a new cabin site, and it is just teetering there, waiting to fall off into the never, never. And it's, it's consuming him, that fear is. Because look, this, the whole value on this, on this piece of equipment is 200,000 bucks. Pretty easy to understand why he's a little bit nervous, isn't it? And he's just hoping and praying that you can swoop in like Superman and save the day for him. Of course you can, right? We've been waiting. We've been salivating over this call all day long, all week long, all month long. Some of us all year long. We've been waiting for this beautiful recovery just waiting there to be handled and we're ready right we're just begging for it so now the question does it really matter if you calculate the resistance now some of you might say in your mind in the back of your mind of course absolutely of course it's gonna matter that's a big hairy deal. Of course I'm going to calculate the resistance. Some of you might say when I give you that example, you know what? I really don't handle heavy equipment. I don't, I don't really have heavy, so it's not something I have to worry about. Fair enough. You could say that this is a really extreme example and something that's not uh, a regular part of the average tower's day. Okay, let's take it back a notch. Next example, we have a propane truck, single axle 33,000 GBWR truck, and your customer, regular everyday customer, All Valley Propane, they've called you up and they say, hey, Bear, we've got a truck out there, Darius is one of our seasonal drivers, and he's stuck. They don't talk to you about what led into it. So let's talk about Darius's day, shall we? Darius gets the list of deliveries that day and he sees this residence that he's going into it. He's been there before uh, and he knows it's kind of a tricky driveway. So he pulls up on the main service road and there's not, it's a real narrow driveway and there's not really any good place to turn around. So what does he do? He's gonna back up the driveway. And that way, his hose is pointed the direction he needs it, and he doesn't have to worry about turning around. So he backs up and he winds his way through the trees, backing up, and he's a pretty good driver, so he's doing great. And he gets right to the end of the asphalt, and his foot slips, and he overshoots the driveway. The back end goes out on the lawn. Ordinarily, no big deal. Darius pulls forward, drags the hose, fills the tank, and it's great. Except this isn't his ordinary day. Because for the last two weeks, it has been raining nonstop. The lakes, the rivers, they're, they're 
chuck full. There's road standing in the ditches. And the lawn that he's just backed onto is saturated. And so what happens? Darius tries to get himself out. It's not happening today. He's stuck. Okay. That's where you come in, isn't it? I think we'd all agree that, as opposed to the excavator, this is something that we could, we could see on a fairly regular basis. Stuck propane truck. Does it really matter if you calculate the resistance? You know, maybe there's some questions that you need to ask beyond that. Maybe a question of what truck is available to go and use? What straps and chains are on that truck and available for you to use? And what's their working load limits? What's the size of the wire rope and what's its working load limit? You could ask those questions. Or you might be the guy, you might be the guy that says, well, you know, I've got my arms folded across when I talk to you. And, well, I know what my equipment can do. I can feel it. I can feel just what my, it's telling me what it, what it's, whether it's loaded or not. I can feel it. I know what my equipment can do. And mind you, I run those, those trucks. I don't, I don't worry about these new Sally hydraulic records. No. I cut my teeth on an old Holmes and, and the chain drive ring gear winches that you pulled and pulled and pulled and it either moved or it broke. One or the other was happening, but it was coming. Not like these trucks that just stall out and give up. No, haven't got time for that. Haven't got time to worry about all those little chains and putting more and more on. No, I don't even bother with half inch chain. All the chains in my box is 5 h chain. You can lug that around, right? Because nothing says safety like dragging 733 pounds of chain out of a box. Nothing says safety like that, right? Throw another chain on there. Sure. Right. We've all met that guy, haven't we? Hey, some of us are that guy. Or we were. Maybe, maybe we were. Maybe we've learned a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. Right? One of the things that Wreckmaster is known for is this idea, this concept of using calculations, using different factors, depending on the scenario that we find to establish what the resistance is to overcome. That resistance, that amount of weight, that amount of force that needs to be exerted on that thing to get it to come out. That's our resistance. Something we've been trying to teach for a long time, really long time. And we keep circling back to this question of, does it really matter if I calculate the resistance? Well, let's take this down to what I think is the, the easiest depiction of what you would do on a daily basis as a tower, or what you might do. Depends on where you're at, but I think we could all say a very common tow is you've now got a call and Bob has a half ton Dodge pickup that's broke down in the parking lot and needs taken to the mechanic. I don't know the numbers, but I would say hundreds of those calls or something just like it happen every single day. Probably every hour there is a hundred plus calls just like that all across the country. So a half ton gas pickup loading onto a carrier deck. Does it matter if you calculate the resistance? Let's walk through that, because I would bet that most of you are going to say no. No, it doesn't matter. Or you might even say, well, maybe it kind of does, 
But I haven't got the time to worry about that. I've got 14 other calls holding, and I don't have time to wait while someone takes out their little writing paper and calculator and punches out, and maybe some of you need the abacus, right, to, to figure it out. I haven't got time for that. Got stuff to do, got to go. Let's slow down a minute, and let's walk through this together. If I take that half ton Dodge, Chevy, Ford, whatever pickup, runs in there about 5,000 pounds, and if I have to just winch it forward on the ground, flat level surface, that's 250 pounds of resistance. That's 5% of the 5,000 pounds. But we're not just winching it out of the spot, are we? No, we've got to go up this gradient. So that increases the resistance, doesn't it? How much? Well, on a 15 degree grade, that's 25% additional resistance. So now instead of 250 pounds, we've got an additional 1,250 pounds to go up a 15 degree grade. Now most of your carrier decks range somewhere between seven degrees and 18 degrees. That's your load angles that you're gonna see. So instead of just 250 pounds, we have to add that 1250, and now we've got 1,500 pounds of resistance to get this loaded up onto the carrier deck. Except that's not the whole story. Now I know every one of you have had every single call happen exactly the way they, it, they told you it was going to when they dispatched you, right? We never get surprised, do we? We never get the information once we get on scene that completely changes everything. No, no, that's never happened, has it? Look, and I, I know that we're all involved in this and we're all trying to manage the chaos that, that we deal with every day. That's what we deal with is chaos. But sometimes I swear the, it, there's a game, there's a contest to see who can give you the most different information that you could have out there? Some of you might submit those to an award. This is the craziest thing that, that changed. But we've got this part of this call and part of our business is that we have to manage that chaos and that uh, different information that we get. So you get out there on this call and you find out that the pickup's not rolling. The reason it needs towed, the reason it needs to go to the mechanic is that all the brakes are locked up. And what that has done is taken us from rolling resistance at 5% to damage resistance at two thirds, 66.6% .6 more resistance. And that's just the surface resistance. That's, that's before we get to the grade. So now we've gone from 1,500 pounds of resistance to get this up onto the carrier deck to over 4,500 pounds of resistance. And right there, any of you who have 3 8 fiber core wire have, have severely overloaded your line. So now I ask the question, does it really matter if you calculate resistance? Maybe the question needs to be instead of, does it really matter if you calculate resistances? What's your life worth? Have you thought about the risk to your life and limb when you don't calculate that resistance, when you don't know? Because even if you are, uh, a competent enough operator to know the working load limits of the rigging that you're using, if you don't know how much weight you're putting against them, how can you, how can you select the right one? How do you do that if you don't have that starting point of what is the resistance to overcome? How well do you trust your karma? How good of friends do you want to be with Murphy, right? How, like, how, how much do you want to wait for that accident? What are you willing to risk? Maybe, you're, maybe your mindset is, I don't have anything to lose. I hope not, because I sure do. I love life. I love life with my limbs. 
I love to be able to walk around, to go ride a horse, to go swimming. I love to be able to do those things. And that's what you're risking. That is what is at stake when you go out there and you don't take care of yourself. Does it really matter if I calculate the resistance? Well, that's a personal question. That's, that's all on you to decide for yourself if it matters to you. So to wrap this up, I want to leave you with two thoughts. Number one, consider your ways. I heard that phrase recently and it really touched home. Consider your ways. Consider those things that you do every day without really thinking about it. That They've just become habits. That's what we do every day. Consider those things and consider what they are doing to you. What, what they may be limiting you from. What they may be holding you back from. And number two, you are precious. You are our industry's most precious commodity. You are of the highest value and please don't let anybody else tell you otherwise and don't, don't tell yourself otherwise. Recognize your value because it is immense. Don't neglect it. Do whatever it is that you need to do to take care of yourself so that we can continue to see you in the day.